Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the Seaman, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the Seaman's Cinema Sit Down. Um, it's kind of funny. I, I was getting prepped for this video and thinking about the last two. How I was like, you know, talking about closing the door on 2020, looking forward to 2021, and things that are coming. And yet, every time so far in 2021, I go to review something outside of WandaVision. I'm going into my toe back into the 2020 well of surprisingly really the the well was solid. It might have been far less than normal, but like really good movies in in 2020. Uh, while the theaters and the industry itself struggled, you know, from a financial standpoint, I think the content that came out this past year was really really solid. And both the last movie that I talked about, One Night in Miami, a uh, re phenomenal Regina King uh, directorial debut. Boom, you can check those uh, thoughts about that one right up there. And now, another movie um, that I was unaware of. I actually think this hit the festival circuit in 2019 and hit VOD in 2020. But didn't know anything about this movie and was like pleasantly surprised by how much I liked it at the end. So why don't you pull up a chair, take a seat. We're getting ready to dive in spoiler free into three day weekend now as i said i didn't know anything about three day weekend prior to the writer director uh retweeting my top 10 uh videos of 2020 uh video and going this made me laugh he was like sorry to barge in on you uh but can you check out my movie it's gotten pretty good reviews trying to spread the the, the word and i laughed because i was like don't ever apologize for recommending a movie even if it's your own film um, I love movies. You guys know this if you, you've been here uh, at all. Um, you know that I'm a huge movie person. I'll watch just about anything. I mean, I like I'm not a genre specific person. I'll watch anything. I'll give anything a shot if it's worth it. I mean, heck, the, the Nelms Brothers came on. Um, they, they, they recommended a few few movies that are in my queue now. Um, you guys have any recommendations or things you'd like to see me review that I haven't? Please hit the comments. Hit uh, Twitter, cinema underscore sit down. Uh, let me know uh, if you want me to watch something. And I gotta say, thank you, Wyatt McDill. One, for making this movie. And two, for letting me know about it and asking me to watch it. Because I happily can tell you that there's good word to be spread here now. This movie, like I said, is kind of like a magic trick. Um, you got de decent performances. Um, you know, uh, you got Morgan Krantz, who plays our lead that you see up there in the picture, uh, Ben Boyd. Um, and basically, Ben just kind of had, had a rough go of it as of late. So he decides to take a three-day weekend to go camping uh, up by this lake. And when he goes on that adventure, he kind of stumbles into a kidnapping. And the fascinating thing about the movie is that there's little to almost no dialogue in it. That was one of the first things I saw when I searched for it online after I had gotten uh, you know, the, the tweet and I was like, huh, little to no dialogue. That's something you don't see happen too often in a film. And the one thing I can say about the acting is with so little dialogue, I, maybe 10 lines tops, and that could be generous. There are moments when you have strangers that confront each other, you have to say some words, um, but very 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 few words and all the actors here specifically boyd i think do a good job of capturing the realness of the events that they're in like their reactions to certain things not all things there were a couple things in the first two acts where i was like why would you do that i'm not sure why you would do that and kind of needed the full picture to understand some of the things that were going on but for the most part, I think the reactions to the things that are happening in the film and things that present specifically uh ben they seem natural and real. Like I, I, I feel very in line with the way that Ben reacts to a lot of things throughout the movie, except for the fact that I may have cut out earlier. I, I would have liked to have helped. I probably would have just called 911 and got out of Dodge because I'm like, I, I'm a pussy. I'm not trying to get killed. And there's a moment where I was like, nope, get out of there. You know better. Don't do it. <laughs> and outside of that, though, I, I'm pretty in line with most of the things that he comes across. And then you have Maya Stosian, uh, who plays Shan, um, and she is the kidnappy, um, and, you know, she's got some interesting things to her character, and same thing, a lot of her reactions feel very, very natural, even though some of them don't make sense, you know, until you, you see everything that's at play, but, like, you sit there and you're like, yeah, that's fair, like, if they, they feel real, they feel grounded, and, and that's key for those two characters, because the two villains, uh, Sledge and Schnapsy, played by Scott McDonald and um, Nathan Phillips, are not grounded. 
Um, for me, watching these two uh, antagonists are kind of like the two sides of the villain coin. Like, you put them together and you got a pretty good, like, villain for a movie. Um, and they're both a little out there in different areas. Like, they're, they're kind of polar... They're, they're similar, but, like, in opposite way. It's interesting. But they, they cover together a pretty wide spectrum. And they're a little bit more unhinged than, than you know, Ben and Shan. And... That, I think, is purposeful, because I think this movie wants to keep you off balance. Um, and, like I said, it's kind of a magic trick. Like, the, the performances are, are good, you know? They keep you engaged enough. But it's really the the, the magician that, that makes me dig this movie, Wyatt McDill. Um, one, I, I love the composition of the film. It kind of bounces around from different things, and again, it's kind of... For me, part of the keeping you off balance. Sometimes you're following Ben like a normal movie. Then it's POV. Um, you know, some of the, the, the choices and things that they do with the camera or, or moving and, and following, you know, different elements of the movie kind of does keep you off balance along with some of the decision making and things that are going on in the film. And I dug that. Like, it, it, it needed the third act. Like, you need the third act payoff to be what the third act payoff is to make the rest of the movie work. So when you're watching it, you might, like the first act setup's pretty good. And then some, you know, Ben makes some really strange decisions. And I'm like, oh man, what, what am I in for? Did, like, is this about to go sideways? Like, am I going to be disappointed? I really wanted to get excited. Um, Cause I, I was hoping, you know, get a really solid movie. Maybe, maybe Wyatt McDill would like to talk to me. If you're watching Wyatt, I would love to talk to you. Cause I did end up thoroughly enjoying your movie. And the third act is the key, man. The payoff all of a sudden, outside of like a couple things, you're like, I don't know why you would do that, but once you were stuck in that situation, I guess you were stuck in that situation. Everything else kind of like, all of a sudden, you're like, wow, dude, like, that's what the, okay, like, bravo, Wyatt McDill. And one of the, the first things that I would ask uh, McDill if I, I were to talk to him would be like, what made you go no dialogue? It was one of the first thoughts I had, like, it's an interesting choice. Like, it works fairly well in something like A Quiet Place to build suspense and terror and horror. Here, you're not really doing that. You're just kind of in this situation that's happening and you're going along and there's just no dialogue. So is it, you're not a strong dialogue writer? Was it a specific choice? And when you watch the movie, it's not that it's a specific choice that plays into the storyline at all. But it is a creative choice that adds an element that's different and also plays into that off balance. You know, when people aren't talking about what's going on or what's happening, you're kind of as confused as our main character. And while we see perspectives from different people throughout the film, as an audience member, we don't know everything. Usually we know everything that's going on as we see different perspectives. But we're pretty much with Ben the whole movie. Like, I don't know what's happening. Like, this is kind of crazy. The stuff that keeps happening gets more and more out there. And you're just like, what is happening? And when you're let in on what is happening, you go, oh, wow. That's a magic trick in and of its own. And without the dialogue, that kind of helps in keeping some of the secrets of the movie more contained and more in our heads. You know, we're kind of trying to figure out this mystery too. And I like the clues that McDill leaves out there. And maybe some people pick up on it faster than I did, but... I really didn't know what was happening until it was happening. I was like, oh, wow, well, well done. And, you know, it's not a, a, like, I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen anything else from Wyatt McDill. Maybe he's not a great dialogue writer. Hopefully I get a chance to ask him that. But I think it was a, a, a smart choice that really works for this film. And like I said, plays into that magic that he's crafting for the third act. And it is the end of the movie that makes it all come together and... I think on a rewatch, if you were to rewatch it, you know, I think this is a movie that has a rewatchability to it. And I think the decisions that he makes, both as a writer uh, in the story that he's telling and as a director in the way in which he is telling it, keeps the audience engaged, even though there were moments where I was almost out. I was like, eh, what's happening here? Like, this, this is going to have to come. And then it does. And you're like, I'm glad I stuck with it. And it's easy to stick with because it's engaging. And, you know... Like I said, it, it feels real. A lot of the things that are going on feel tangible. Like if you were Ben and the situation played out the way it did, it all kind of makes sense. And uh, like I said, the third act just did it for me. So three-day weekend, 
big old bucket of wind, Wyatt McDill. Thank you for recommending it to me or just asking me to watch it. You didn't ask me to review it, but I am going to review it. I'm going to spread the good word, man. This is a movie that, like I said, I'll say it probably 500 times in this review. It's a legitimate magic trick and uh, one that I hope you guys will check out if you haven't checked out um, and give it a chance because it's cool to see, you know, the, these smaller movie indie filmmakers you know, getting out, trying to spread the word themselves for their own movies. And when it is something good, I want to spread it. Because I want to see more from Wyatt McDill. I want to see what else this kid has got. Or this this man. I, I don't I don't know. I have no <laughs> up too much on you, Wyatt. Um, don't judge me and please come talk to me on the channel. But those are all my thoughts on 3 Day Weekend. Now I want to know uh, what you're thinking. Did you know about this movie? Um, was this something that was on your radar? Did, did you see it maybe during the festival circuit if it when it ran there? Um you know, where, how did you come across this movie and what would you think of it? Um, if you are unfamiliar with this movie, uh, are you now intrigued? Are you like, hmm, see man, you got a mystery going on here that I, I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down and kind of digging like, I want to see a magic trick in a movie. Uh, if that's something you're intrigued by, please let me know down below in the comments section. Uh, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please Give me a thumbs up, and if you're new, you want to come hang out with the old C-Man, uh, show a little love, support, maybe be here if I can track down Wyatt McDill and get him to come on and talk about uh, this pretty freaking cool movie, Three Day Weekend. And you just want to be here, you know, and let me know that you're digging what we're doing over here. You can do that by jumping over there, joining the C-Maniac Nation by hitting the subscribe button. Hit that little bell if you want those alerts, and until next time, for the C-Man Cinema, sit down. I've been the C-Man. I'm signing off. Peace. Well, as I live and breathe, you still here? Check out a video like this one or this one and hit the subscribe button so you can get alerts and check out everything the Seaman's got at the cinema. Sit down.